This will be unboxing of the Gigabyte Z, or depending on where you're from, Z68X UD5 B3 motherboard. Obviously, the B3 designation is for the first six series motherboards that had the uh, defective SATA 2, 3 gigabits per second uh, connector. That over time, there was a 5% chance of the connector uh, degrading and then becoming uh, non functional. So that's why uh, Intel committed like $700 million to fixing the problem and they came out with the B3 stepping. And just so it's easier for consumers to know, is this motherboard going to is this motherboard going to have a problem? They put B3 on it. So it ends up being a very long uh, uh, product model name. Now, what do Gigabyte want us to know about this motherboard? It has 20 phase power, Nvidia SLI ready, touch BIOS. Obviously they really want us to know about that nice big icon logo there. Supports Intel Core series processors. These are the second generation, so, so like your Intel Core i5 2500, 2500K, 2600, 2600K. All socket 1155, not 1156. Z68 chipset. All Japanese capacitors rated up to 500 hours. Uh, low RDS MOSFETs. All ferret core chokes. USB power times three, so that's three times the standard power specification for USB 3, so if you want to power a USB hub with a lot of devices, you won't have a problem. USB 3 at 4.8 gigabits per second, over 480 megabits per second, which is USB 2, and SATA version 3, 6 gigabit per second, which is the latest and greatest. There's an icon up here that says 2011 Expert Motherboard, Ultra Cool, Ultra Durable, Ultra efficient power, ultra performance, and unlocked performance with Intel K designated CPUs. So let's say you have an Intel Core i5 2500, you will not be able to overclock uh, up and up past the turbo mode unless you have a K series processor, which do have a bit of an extra price tag on them. This motherboard, like all Gigabyte motherboards, has Ultra Drupal 3 with two ounces of. Uh, copper, two times amount of copper in the printed circuit board. It allows for uh, better overall connectivity and uh, lower impedance of the system. But there'll probably be more on that on the back. Okay, on the back, we see the Ultra Drupal 3. It has uh, lower temperatures, better overclocking, better power efficiency, twice the level of lower impedance, lower EMI, and better electrostatic uh, discharge protection. You can see a little diagram here of what a gigabyte board is like with twice the amount of copper and we can see industry phase uh, 20 phase uh, CPU VRM design support for the Intel Core i7, i5 and i3 processors though if you're using an i3 with a motherboard like this you should probably reconsider your system setup eSATA USB combo ports on the back panel high speed gigabit Ethernet connection, USB 3 support, NVIDIA SLI and ATI crossfire support, but it would, will still support the AMD uh, 6000 series and up video cards. Hardware protection over voltage controls, support for dual channel DDR3 memory, SATA 6 gigabit per second port, onboard 8 SATA ports, dual BIOS with 3 terabyte plus hard disk drive technology, and that's a hybrid EFI technology. And support for the 3 way SLI, 3 way graphics. They're not talking about ATI in a specific way, which is, is a bit strange. We have the onboard 333, which is the USB 3, being uh, 10 times more powerful. They say 5 gigabits per second. The standard is actually 4.8, so it may actually be. If you get a gigabyte board, it's 5 gigabits per second. Up to 3 times USB power, and up to 4 times the speed with SATA 3, if you have a RAID 0 configuration with some SATA. Uh, three 6 gigabit per second drives. Autogreen technology, which allows you to pair a mobile phone via Bluetooth with a uh, Bluetooth enabled uh, device on your computer. So if you buy like a Bluetooth dongle, if you go away from your computer, it will put your computer in sort of a hibernation mode and where it consumes less power. Extreme hard disk drive uh, profile set, we've got the Smart 6, which basically allows you to manage your entire system with inside of your Windows operating system. We can see the 20 phase power, power A engine, dual CPU power, power B engine, delivers maximum power, all that 
very clean, efficient power delivery from a 20 phase system. It means your overclocks are going to be a lot more stable, and they're also uh, going to, your CPUs are going to produce less heat because the power is being distributed across the CPU efficiently rather than all hodgepodge. So now getting to the, what you're all probably wanting to see is the motherboard itself. So let's just open the box. Now some people are probably wondering, well, I have a P67, a UD5, UD5B3, why, what, what's, the, what's the difference? Well, basically, there's not a terrible amount of difference, but there is a considerable amount of difference. As we can see on the back here, there's SSD caching system, which basically allows you to pair a conventional hard disk drive with an a cheap solid state drive, so you could get a 60 gig solid state drive. And what the software can do, if you configure it, is it will use the SSD as a super fast uh, memory cache. So the files that you're recalling on a lot, it will put on that SSD, so your overall performance will be a lot higher. And it says up to four times plus, and that was a, with a PC Mark Vantage test. I think that's enough of the, the box there. We open the box, and there's another box. It's a white box. We open up this box. We can see all the peripherals. We've got the a USB 3, 3.5 inch drive bay adapter. You can put that in. It's a quick alternative for, for front panel, which hasn't quite got to be in the standard cases. We've got a lovely warning from Gigabyte that says socket 1155, not socket 1156. So if you have a P55 board with a something like a uh, i7-860, this will not work with this motherboard. They are a completely different socket, they are a completely different chipset. We have a manual with the driver's disk. Throw it away, download the latest drivers from the Gigabyte website. Multilingual installation guidebook. Yes, very thorough. We have black uh, SATA cables. We have a IO shield plate, nicely color coded and labeled with USB, the PS2 connections, USB 3, 7.1 channel HD audio, a black SLI bridge, which will complement the black PCB of this motherboard excellently. Lift up this divider, and you will find the Z68X UD5 B3 motherboard in an anti-static bag. Now before handling any uh, electrostatic sensitive devices, always remember to ground yourself before handling because you could damage them. It's it's very unlikely, but you know, just, just for safety's sake. Just remove. Okay, the motherboard itself. As you can see, it's lovely to see that Gigabyte have finally started to make motherboards with black, black PCBs rather than their, their blue. Their blue wasn't terribly bad, but if you have, you know, uh, if you spend a lot of money on a case, you've got black interior, you've got you know, all, all your, your setup when you want the aesthetics, you have a window, you're going to want a, a matte black PCB motherboard. If you don't, it's, if you if you get a blue one or some other color, it's just gonna, it's just not gonna look terribly good. So kudos to Gigabyte for finally getting around to making a, a matte black PCB motherboard. As we can see, we've got all the expansion slots. We have PCI Express X1, PCI Express X16. This runs at full X16 bandwidth. PCI Express X1, PCI slot, PCI Express. X16 in length, but if you look here, it's only wired electrically up to X8. PCI slot, and then another PCI Express X16 slot, which visually looks like it's X8, but is only wired up to X4. And you should, it's preferably uh, best if you do not use this expansion port for uh, any sort of high end device, like don't put a video card in here because it does run off another chipset. We have a 4 pin system fan header, two USB 3 front panel headers, 
we have two USB uh, front panel connections, USB 3 and USB 2. This is the red label one, is the on off recharge. We do have the heatsink for the platform control hub. We've got note for the CPU socket, dual channel memory DIMMs, the 24 pin power connector in the ideal location on the right hand side of the board, the 20 phase power. We've got uh, on the back panel we have 7.1 channel HD audio. We've got uh, four USB 3 ports. We have eSATA USB 2 combo, eSATA USB 2 combo here, two more USB 2. We've got 3094A Firewire, iLink Firewire, two more USB 2 ports, SPDIF and optical out, and the PS2 port. Moving to the top of the board, we've got on off power switch. Good if you've got this system on a, on a uh, bench test. We've got a three pin power connector in the top left corner, CPU four pin here. We've got all the cooling for the, the PWMs and then the MOSFETs and, and the, the, the VRMs all well uh, ventilated there and all well cooled with a nice looking design with ultra durable blue gigabyte and then on the bottom here we have a firewire connection if you use firewire and strangely enough the Z68X UD4 B3 model below this has the front panel audio header, which is here for some weird reason, down here where it probably should be. So when you route all your cables, all your front panel connections, all your USB, all your, your power, your reset switch, it's down here. Where most motherboard manufacturers have been doing it for a while. But with the UD5 B3, for some unknown reason, it's right behind the uh, back panel audio. Not that that's a terrible thing, you could always route the cable through the CPU 8-pin connection and that would be, be covered up uh, relatively well and rather than having a cable being strung across yeah, yeah, effectively the north bridge. As we move around to the back of the motherboard we can see the back plate for the CPU using metal uh, pu uh, push pins rather than cheap uh, plastic push pins, washer screw better quality, it's not as if you're going to get uh, some of the, the heat sinks falling off the motherboard. We'll move to the SATA connections now. We, these two white ones are SATA 6 gigabits per second, SATA version 3, and these uh, four here are SATA 3 gigabits per second. If you were using uh, an SSD cache, you would you'd probably want to use these two SATA 3 gigabits per second first. We also have the uh, dual BIOS on this motherboard somewhere. Which allows basically, if you're updating your system's BIOS and there's a power outage, you will not have a completely corrupted BIOS in a complete dead board. You can just switch to the other BIOS chip and then you will be back on your way in no time. As we can see, there's plenty of expansion capability of this motherboard. We've got labels for HI Crossfire, Dolby Home Theater, where you uh, do have that ability to to hook up a, a high level s uh, sound system to this motherboard. With the we have the option for dual channel memory, so that'll support uh, DDR3 memory with the support for 1066, 1333. 1600, 1866, and 2133. On the on the profile board, just read the general specifications. It has for the at BIOS program, which allows you to update your motherboard's BIOS from inside the Windows operating system. It's a little bit of doing it the actual proper way by doing it through startup. It has the autogreen technology, easy tune, which allows you to tweak the motherboard settings including voltage, clock speed. It has the Express BIOS Rescue which like with the dual BIOS system before. This also on the drivers and installation this does come with Norton Internet Security. It's an OEM copy that you can decide to use or not use. It's up to you. And thank you for watching the unboxing and uh, brief overview of the Gigabyte Z68X UD5 B3 motherboard.